Hey guys, Dave here. So the last episode, we went herping in Santa Cruz Biological Research Center here in the Peruvian Amazon for all the boa species that were here, and we found a couple of just absolutely amazing boas, but I still have not found the Bushmaster, and that's one of the reasons that I was looking so forward to coming to Santa Cruz. It's out there somewhere, so let's go continue to herp Santa Cruz Biological Research Center here deep in the Peruvian Amazon. Unzilla presents the Reptile Channel Adventures. Every day was magical in the Peruvian rainforest, and every day we hiked through the thick jungle within Santa Cruz Biological Research Station in anticipation of what new surprises we might find. We hiked for miles checking every crevice and every tree and root system, often coming across snakes like this one. The common bird snake gets its name from being a well-known predator of bird eggs and raiding the nests of both ground-nesting birds and those who nest in low-lying shrubs and trees. It is in the colubrid family of typical snakes and readily bites when handled. One of the more common snakes we encountered was the beautiful Amazon Scarlet Snake, also known as the Crowned False Boa. With its uniform scarlet colored coloration, it wasn't too difficult to see it as it soaked up the morning rays before it retreated to cover to wait out the day. The Crested Forest Toad is part of the Margarita Ferra complex. This toad has so much character with elongated crests along its flanks and a row of spines along its back. It is my personal favorite among all the toad species we encountered. The Olive Whip Snake, also sometimes known as the Brown Sipo, is a common snake that is widely distributed throughout the Amazon. They can more than often be seen hanging from low branches along streams and rivers on the hunt for unsuspecting anurans. We hiked all day, and as night fell, we headed out again through the landscape teeming with life. In the pond behind camp, schools of wild angelfish grouped in the shallows. And in the forest, we found some of the most strange, beautiful, and deadly creatures on Earth. Look at that, those are ants crawling across the surface of the water. It looks like some are under the water too. Some are actually in the water too. Some are swimming. I've never seen anything like that before. And it wasn't long until we came across another aquatic coral snake. This one having just had a meal. We photographed it as it righted its jaws back into place. Knowing that if we were there only minutes later, we would have never known it was there. Now that is herping in the Amazon. Phenomenal. Woo! That is amazing. Of the Dipsa species of snail-eating snakes in the Amazon, Indica is one of the largest. This one was encountered on the hunt for slugs and snakes, its primary diet. One of the largest tree frogs in the world, the giant monkey frog, is a strictly arboreal species coming down from the canopy into the lower vegetation only in the breeding season. Both females and males construct a leaf nest above forest pools to accommodate the nearly 600 eggs that will be laid. When the eggs hatch from these nests, the tadpoles fall into the water where they continue the development into adult frogs. As morning broke on our last day in Santa Cruz, 
we ventured out yet again into the never-ending jungle. We had one final day to find the number one target species on my list. And there, sitting by the side of the trail, our long search had come to an end. Bushmasters are the biggest pit viper in the world and the second longest venomous snake in the world, rivaled only by the King Cobra. They can grow to an astounding 3 meters or 10 feet, but the largest recorded specimen was almost 3.65 meters or 12 feet long. Here in Peru, they are called the Shashupe, and its name Lachesis comes from the Greek mythology as one of the three fates used to assign humans their term of life. Muda means quiet, so in other words, this snake's Latin name literally means silent death. Its venom is a hemotoxic cocktail of toxic chemical compounds, which means any rodent or small woodland mammal has about a zero chance of survival once bitten. In humans unlucky enough to get tagged by this snake, there is a reported 80% mortality rate. The Bushmaster is the only egg-laying pit viper found in the New World. Females like clutches of 5 to 19 eggs, and they are only slightly larger than chicken eggs. Like the King Cobra, the female coils around the eggs, guarding them until they hatch, and won't leave them for the 60 to 80 days of incubation, not even to hunt and feed. One of the unique characteristics of the Bushmaster are its dorsal scales, which are heavily keeled with bulbous tubercles. There is no confusing this snake with any others out here in the Amazon. After we took tons of photos and video, we let this guy find a more suitable hiding place and high-fived each other all the way back to camp. So guys, our time in the Peruvian rainforest has come to an end with this episode. It has been one of the most incredible two-week herping adventures of my life. And I can't encourage you guys enough to look into coming down here on one of these expeditions. So I've put the links in the description below for MT Expeditions and Project Amazonas. Look into it. Honestly, it's not as expensive as you think it is, but email Matt Cage and he will tell you everything you need to know about joining him on one of these expeditions. It will be the greatest herping adventure of your life.